welcome to this, and this is going to be not exactly what I had planned, but um, I'm going to do the ROH TV thoughts, um, review, whatever, and then I'm going to do a little rant on on kind of, well, I guess the state of indie wrestling in, it, in, in kind of a way, but um, let's talk about the Ring of Honor uh, show first, and then we'll get off on that, because it kind of has to do with what, I have, what I'm going to talk about. So, show is very good, by the way. Th this is one of the shows where those of you that have not been able to see the show, um, I wish there was a way you guys could see the show in its entirety, because I love what ROH Brazil does. I love the fact that he uploads stuff. I just wish he was able to upload whole shows and not clip, you know, not just have to, have to separate the shows. Because um, this would be a show that really, I think, needs to be seen in its entirety, from start to finish, um, because it was really good. Um, it did a lot of good things and all of that sort of stuff. But um, still, uh, so let me let me start uh, with this. Um, so they showed back from in August, where um, August sixth, and Shane Hagedorn and uh, Davy Richards kind of had a confrontation, which basically led to you know Davy Richards telling him you know that him him and Hagedorn were finished, and so that's how they started off the show. Then then. We found out we were going to get one of the 10-minute hunts with Eddie Edwards, um, with Shane Hagedorn. Now, if you've watched the show, if you followed this, this has basically been Eddie Edwards just taking on nobodies and tin cans and all of that sort of stuff. So, um, uh, they they do this little promo, then Jim Cornette comes out, and Jim Cornette says that. You know, Eddie Edwards is better than this. Eddie Edwards um, should be taking on better opponents. Um, he's been taking on Tim Cans. He's been listening to Shane Hagedorn. Shane Hagedorn's just been, you know, putting guys in front of him that are far too easy. That the t television title was meant to be this great, wondrous thing, and he's turning it into a joke, and this and that. And this eventually led to uh, Eddie Edwards agreeing with Cornette and said, Give me whoever you want, and out came Kenny King. So, for the television title, we got Kenny King um, with with Rhett Titus um, coming out and taking on Eddie Edwards. Now, they did this little commercial break, and then they, they when they came back from the commercial break, they showed uh, King and Titus taking out Delirious um, after Delirious beat Austin Aries. And we'll get to that, because that's kind of what I want to talk about is Austin Aries. But um, that led to the match. This was a, I would say, a great television match, a very good match. Um, I wish the crowd had been... A little bit more into it. This is why I think they need to leave um, Philly because the crowd that they get for the show just isn't isn't a good crowd. And I know people go, oh, it's the, because of the way they tape, and I do understand that. But still, th this was this was a very good television match, and and th they were pretty much dead through this whole thing. So, um, well, through a lot of it, I shouldn't say through the whole thing because they did wake up because the guys were hitting some pretty crazy stuff, and uh, really kind of a must-see, I would say a must-see TV match, but definitely a TV match I would kind of go and see. Um, after that, we got a recap of uh, Kevin Steen and Steve Carino taking on El Generico and uh, Cole Cabana from a Glory by Honor in the chain match. They kind of showed the highlights of that, so uh, there we go there, and that led to uh, the Pick Your Poison matches, which was Generico's was tonight, and it was going to be uh, Davey Richards. Which, yeah, like, that's going to suck. Um, then we got uh, a recap of um, Tyler Black and the ROH title and all of that stuff. And him going to the WWE uh, before Glory by Honor. And this, of course, was taped before Glory by Honor, but is being showed afterwards. And he wasn't the title. It wasn't, you know, the guy. And, or didn't come out with the title. Um, he got you sold out chance and this and that. Uh, it, was, so it was Tyler Black versus Mike Seidel. Um, and basically a, you know, a squash. It was pretty good. It was what it was. and eh, didn't mind it. wasn't offensive. Then uh, Kyle Durden was backstage with Steve Carino and Kevin Steen. Um, cut a pretty good promo uh, about El Generico. And uh, was, was, was very, very, was, was, helped set up next week's um, Kevin Steen match, which they didn't announce, oddly enough. Or at least the, not that I heard. Uh, then we got um, them talking about Davey Richard announcing that he wasn't retiring. Yet again, they've overplayed that promo as great as it was. It's it's just too much. So then we got El Generico versus Davey Richards. Very good match. Um, great TV match. 
went out there, did their thing. The ending is 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 really cool. Um, very good show in my opinion. This was this this is what I want ROH to be more often. I'm not saying they have to be this every week <clears throat> because I think that would be a bit difficult. But um, this is what I would love to see more often. This is what I would like to see the you know I'd love to see more of these shows and then maybe every once in a while maybe just a couple steps down. But then a lot of shows this and maybe just a step down from that because the the main the the, the opener was very good. I don't think you're going to get that quality of an opener all the time, but I definitely think you get this quality of a main event. So this is definitely the type of show I'd rather get. I would rather get. We got uh, story progression. We got uh, story progression within the matches. Um, they said you know the the whole thing was we're going to get a confrontation between Shane Hagedorn and both Richards and Edwards. Um, next week, so really good episodic television, I liked it, um, definitely, I would say go out of your way to watch the show, um, not that there's any, you know, go out of your way of matches to watch, but I think the overall show is very enjoyable, and if there's any way you can see the whole show um, without it being kind of edited up, I definitely would go out of your way to do that, because it was very enjoyable, it was a very good show, um, very good show, so, um, so, Austin Aries. Austin Aries apparently now is gone from ROH. Not that I think that's necessarily a horrible, th or a, 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 I don't think that's a horrible thing. Um, I don't think it's a great thing. I think it's kind of an indifferent thing, to my opinion. Um, he was kind of, you know, being kind of phasing, seemed to be, fa be phasing out of the R for the wrestling and more into the managing and all of that sort of thing. And um, I just think that... I, I think he had become, even though his character was very good, I think he had become somewhat stale as well. And I think that you could say that about a lot of the ROH uh, talent. I, I do think they need a new influx of talent. The question is, where's that talent going to come from? And this is kind of where, where the rant comes from. Um, you know, when Ring of Honor started, um, probably the first three, four years of Ring of Honor existence, you had this 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 plethora of talent that emerged um, that was coming up to the indies um, and guys that you know basically because of the Attitude Era had, were fans of pro wrestling wanted to be pro wrestlers this that and the other over the last five years I would say that's not the case um, per per se um, or starting about probably five years ago um, the talent started to get thinner and thinner and thinner as far as new guys showing up. And then the reason is is because of MMA. Guys don't want to be pro wrestlers anymore. Guys would much rather go to MMA schools or jiu-jitsu schools and, or Brazilian jiu-jitsu schools and learn and, and try to become MMA fighters because that's where it's at. That's what, you know, The Rock just a couple weeks ago said that if, you know, he was coming up now, he wouldn't have been a pro wrestler. He'd have tried to have been a MMA fighter. Um... And on the other hand, just look at, you know, Tito Ortiz always said that he wanted to be a pro wrestler and he wound up being an MMA fighter. Um, Brock Lesnar, we know a little about that. Um, Chal Sonnen, same thing. He, he originally wanted to be a pro wrestler and he be, ended up being an MMA guy. There's a lots of MMA guys who grew up kind of wanting to be pro wrestlers but wound up being MMA fighters instead. And... Um, you know, you look at uh, Davey Richards had said that if, you know, he'd maybe come along, you know, two, three years later, he'd been he'd MMA. Same thing with uh, Brian Danielson. So, and there's lots of other guys that have kind of said the same thing. Um, you know, uh, Kurt Angle probably would have been the same way. And I think that therein shows that there's a huge problem. Because not only is the WWE, the, not WWE, but pro wrestling in general, um, and in a lot of ways, uh, uh, Japan has kind of kind of went through this for a while. Um, the fact that you're now fighting for talent, and you know, pro wrestling's losing. Now, one of the reasons why they're losing is because I feel just from, and I've noticed this. This just isn't a new thing. I know this is a continuous thing. I've noticed is a lot of the wrestling schools aren't doing the things they used to do, or not doing a lot of things they need to do. You know, for a long time it was, oh, well, if a guy wants to be a pro wrestler, he'll come to us. and they were, Or they felt like they didn't need to go look for guys. Go and watch, you know, like old, go watch guys that, you know, came up like early 80s, during the 70s, and listen to what a lot of those guys said, how they got into wrestling. It was guys came up to them and said, hey, man, come to my wrestling school. Hey, you know, 
this, that, or the other. It wasn't just a lot of, oh, by the way, oh, look, a wrestling school. Let's go learn how to be pro wrestlers. It, it, there was that, but there was also a lot of, you know, you know, guys getting recruited to be pro, become pro wrestlers. The WWE still does this to an extent, but, you know, they're looking for a specific guy, and they're only going to look for that specific guy, and you're, they're going to miss out on a lot of talent. If more schools would actually go out and, you know, recruit, or if even a lot of the indie promotions that have schools would go out and do a better job, in my opinion, of recruiting talent, you wouldn't need this. I mean, there's pretty much probably every indie is within, you know, 25 miles of a high school that probably has a fairly good athlete, athlete that is in that high school who, for whatever reason, isn't going to go to college. And there's no reason why these promoters shouldn't be aware of this and shouldn't be, or these guys that run these wrestling schools and going, hey, you know, why don't you come and we'll teach you how to wrestle and and you work for us a little bit and we won't really won't pay you, but we'll teach you how to wrestle and then maybe you can, you know, earn money down the line and maybe make some make maybe make a few bucks for yourself. Maybe. But for the most part that's not happening. And guys would much rather, you know, spend more money um, to learn to be MMA guys and maybe end up making less money because they're not looking at it that way. It's a huge problem, in my opinion, and and what compounds the problem is the fact that we have this thing that I'm on right now. I'm not, I'm not talking about YouTube. I'm talking about the internet. And heaven forbid you walk into a wrestling school and someone finds out that, let's say, I'm not saying a, a guy on YouTube because you're probably going to get maybe recognized, but maybe they find out that you you write um, some sort of article on one of the you know the wrestling sites. And now the guy, and now the guys are going to either give you a hard time, try to get rid of you, um, start shooting on you, trying to legit hurt you because they don't want you there because they see you as one of those internet guys that you know they don't want to be part of. Instead of, instead of, and I've seen this happen, and this makes no sense to me. Instead of, oh, this guy already has a following. Imagine, particularly if it's a if it's a school that's that's part of a of an organization that sells DVDs of, eh, maybe we sell 50 DVDs at best. Maybe we could sell just a couple of hundred or a couple dozen DVDs. And this guy, you know, has a pretty good following. And maybe with him, we can sell a couple of hundred DVDs just because he's on the show and just because the people that follow him and, and the people that read his articles will want to, you know, see what he's like in the ring. You just made money. You just made money off this guy. Yes, the guy, you know, writes about pro wrestling, but you just made money off the guy and more money than you would be. But you're not going to do it because these guys have such short-sightedness when it comes to this. You know, there's guys here on YouTube that I know always say, uh, you know, I want to be pro wrestlers, that I want to be a pro wrestler, I want to be in the pro wrestling business. And to be honest, any time that you, you know, you write articles about pro wrestling, uh, 411, whatever, um, no DQ, whatever. Anytime you come on here on YouTube and you talk about pro wrestling and you become somewhat, you know, um, followed on here, you can pretty much kiss that goodbye. And I'm not just talking, you know, by personal experience about myself because honestly, I've I've never had this happen. I've never tried to be in pro wrestling industry, and you know, never been, you know, never had anyone even ask me. But you know, I do know that there are guys that have and have been pretty much laughed at because, oh, you're one of those YouTube guys. You, we don't want anything to do with you. Or you're one of those YouTube guys. We're going to shoot on you and we're going to make an example out of you. Instead of looking at the other way, oh, look, this guy may actually be able to make us money because that's what it should be about making us money. And maybe we can teach this guy. Pro wrestling is going to have to the, – the guys that run these schools are going to have to wake up and realize that, you know what? Um, we're going to we're going to have to find guys with talent because the talent isn't there. I'm sorry, there is a there is a huge drop off. If you compare the talent five years ago that were just in the indies to now, it's 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 pretty staggering how how just different it is. And I think most people would 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 say that. I mean, you've got and on top of that, because of the economy, you, know, you look at ROH. People continually ask about, you know, why I don't do um, as many ROHD reviews as, as far as DVDs. I'll tell you the truth. I don't buy a lot of, I don't 
I haven't bought a DVD in forever because I honestly think that the production quality is so sucky that I'm not going to buy the DVDs. I'll freely say that. I don't think it's very good. Um, I think Chikara is the only one that really has any production values of any legitness, and that's because they have a company that basically does it for them in smart market that they're having to divide the money up with. I've never, ever been, you know, like some people been amazed with uh, PWG's production because I think the sound is often horrible on on their DVDs and I've just never been wowed by by their production values that some people have but you know and that's 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 a different argument but I think it's something that needs to be brought up is the fact that you know you have these guys but the talent the talent is just not there and not that there aren't talented young guys out there not that there are talented young guy you know but you don't see that crop of guys that should have come up to you know replace Samoa Joe and Brian Danielson and Nigel McGuinness and Loki and uh, Christopher Daniels and Austin Aries and all of these other guys that the Indies should have been able to say, "Ooh, look, let's bring up you know this next crop of talent." It's not there. Most of them are fighting in MMA right now, and I think that a lot of these schools, which pro wrestling is going to have to rely on. Because if you don't have guys learning how to be pro wrestlers, where are the pro wrestlers going to come from? You can't rely on the WWE to do that. You're truly, truly going to fall flat. And on top of that, you can't, you know, the guys that, and I hate to say this, the guys that I often see going to pro wrestling schools, to me, don't necessarily look like pro wrestlers. You need guys that look like pro wrestlers. And if you're getting guys coming into your school that don't look like pro wrestlers, you need to go out and find guys that look like pro wrestlers. You need to go out and find guys that look like badasses, you know, for your school. And if you have a promotion for the school, for the promotion. So maybe you can make a little bit of money for your, you know, promotion and your school. Just saying. Um, it, it's, it's definitely a problem. And I think it's going to even become a bigger problem because, you know, you have to add the when you look at the indies right now, and you look at the guys that have only been maybe wrestling for a couple of years, you know, as opposed to, you know, Brian Danielson, as opposed to when Samoa Joe came up, as as opposed to when the Briscoes came up, as opposed to when even when Chris Hero and Claudio Castagnoli and Nigel McGuinness and um, Loki and Homicide and uh, AJ Styles. You know, I go on and on and on and on. You just don't see that influx of talent, and it's going to be it's something that's going to have to change. But, anyways, I've ranted about that, and I don't even think it was that good of a rant. But long enough, um, probably bored a lot of people and probably said a lot of things that was going to upset people, but I don't really care. Uh, with that, I'm out. Have a good one. Later.